I don't know if it's going to work now or not. So the Qasr Namaz, uh, it is for these three Namazes only. There's no Qasr Namaz in uh, Maghrib, nor there's any Qasr Namaz in Fajr. And this is only for the Fard Namazes. So there is no Qasr Namaz in any uh, Sunnahs. And basically it's only in four Rakat prayers. So uh, the four Rakat of Zohar and, uh, and the four Sunnahs of Asr. You read all four of them. You do not do Qasr. Only the Qasr would be in the Fard Namaz. And like I said that according to the Hanafi school of thought. That when you are a travel traveler. Then you have to read Qasr Namaz. It is wajib. It is compulsory upon you. Uh, even though you feel like reading the whole Namaz. You feel like reading all four Raka'ats. But even then you have to read the Qasr Namaz. And if you do not read the Qasr Namaz. Then according to the Hanafi uh, school of thought. You are leaving a wajib. And that would end up leaving you with more sin. Instead of gaining sawab you would gain sin. So that was the first hadith that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed two rakats in Qasr. The second hadith, Babu Majaa fi kam tuqsar salatu that how many days did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shorten the prayers? Now when a person is traveling, uh, there's a limited amount of days where he can uh, read Qasr. So we'll first read the hadith then inshallah we'll go in a little detail. حدثنا أنس بن مالك قال خرجنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من المدينة إلى مكة فصلى ركعتين. قال قلت لي أنس كم أقام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بمكة قال عشرا. قال وفي الباب عن عبد الباس وجابر. So this hadith is by Anas ibn Malik, a very famous companion of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was a young Sahabi. Um, he was so young that even in the jang e badr at the time of Badr, he was not allowed to go to the, to the war because he was so young at that time. So he was from the young companions. So he says that I exited with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Medina towards Makkah. So he prayed two rakats. So uh, the Tabari he's saying that I asked Anas ibn Malik that how many days did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stay in Makkah? So he said for 10 days. Qala wa fil babi an an ibn Abbas wa Jabe in this in this narration is from Anas ibn Malik there's also narrations from Ibn Abbas and Jabir and there's uh, from Ibn Abbas it is mentioned an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam anna qama fi ba'd asfarihi 19 rak'ah yusalli rak'atayn qala Ibn Abbas fa nahnu idha qamna ma bayna wa bayna 19 sallayna rak'atayn wa inzidna ala dhalika atman atmamna as-salata so Ibn Abbas says that there were some days when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he used to travel, he used to stay at least 19 days. So uh, he says that whenever we used to stay 19 days or less, we used to pray the two rakats, we used to pray the qasr. But if we had the plan to stay more than 19 days, then uh, we, used to, uh, we used to read the whole namazes. So when we go to qasr, and I'm just giving the brief summary of traveling uh, because I just want to mention the hadith and a little detail for it. So in Qasr, uh, according to the Hanafi school of thought, there's different opinions on this. According to the Hanafi school of thought, uh, the, the m uh, maximum days for traveling is 15 days. So if you are planning to go somewhere um, and you have the intention that you would come uh, before 15 days, then you would read the Qasr Namaz. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, not only when you are afraid or you're in the state of fear that you would be attacked by the enemies that you read the Qasr Namaz, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it a blessing that even when it's a peaceful journey, when you're at the hotel, when everything is provided to you, even at that time you are reading the Qasr Namazes. So it is a, a truly a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 15 days is the maximum time for, uh, according to the Hanafi school of thought, for traveling. 
And if one has the intention from before that he's going to travel for more than 15 days, he already has the mindset that he is going somewhere for two m- month or two months or even more than that, then from the beginning that person would have to read uh, full namazes. He cannot read Qasr namaz. So if you're planning on to go to Pakistan for 25 days and you're already having that plan, so when you're going to go to Pakistan, you're from day one, you're going to read full namazes. It's not going to be that you're reading 15 namazes, 15 days you're reading Qasr namazes and after 15 days you're going to read full namazes. No, you're going to have to read full namazes from the beginning. But if you had the plan to go for 15 days and 15 days pass by and after 15 days something comes up and you have to stay for more. So now you've read uh, Qasr namazes for the 15 days but after the, uh, the 15th day now you would read the full raqat. And like yesterday, I was mentioning that he, uh, Imam uh, Tirmidhi, he mentions at the end of each hadith uh, who acts according to it. So even in this hadith, he mentions, So previous Ibn Abbas, عن, he says that 19 days. Now Hazrat Ibn Umar, عن, he says that 15 days and whoever stays or intends to stay more than 15 days so he would uh, read the whole namaz uh, and it is also mentioned 12 days uh, and many of the scholars have this is Imam Tirmizi saying that many of the scholars have different opinions on this فَأَمَّا سُفْيَانِ الثَّوْرِي وَأَهْلُ الْكُوفَى As for Sufyan al-Thawri, who was a companion of Hazrat uh, Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu, him and Ahl al-Kufa. Whenever Imam uh, Tirmizi says Ahl al-Kufa, he is normally meaning Imam Abu Hanifa and his companions. So uh, Sufyan al-Thawri and Ahl al-Kufa say, فَذَهَبُوا إِلَىٰ تَوْقِيدِ خَمْسَ عَشَرَ وَقَالُوا إِذَا أَجْمَعَ إِلَىٰ إِقَامَةِ خَمْسَ عَشَرَ أَتَمَّ الصَّلَاةِ So when uh, the, Imam Sufyan al sawri and uh, Ali Kufa, they say that 15 days is the maximum time limit and if someone has the intention to go more than 15 days, then he would have to read all the namazes. Hadith number 3. Hadith number 1 was, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray two rakats. The hadith number 2 was, they, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Mecca for 10 days but there is uh, different opinions by the Sahaba whether it, the maximum days is 19 days, 15 days, 12 days, etc. Hadith number 3 An ibn Umar qala sallaytu ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil hadhar wa saf fa sallaytu ma'u fil hadhar az zuhra arba'an wa ba'daha raka'atayn wa sallaytu ma'u fil safr az zuhra raka'atayn wa ba'daha raka'atayn وَالْعَسْرَ رَقَتَيْنَ وَلَمْ يُسَلِّ بَعْدَ شَيْئًا وَالْمَغْرِبِ فِي الْحَذْرِ وَالصَّفْرِ سَوَاءً ثَلَاثَةَ رَقَعَاتٍ لَا تَنْقُصُ فِي الْحَذْرِ وَلَا فِي الصَّفْرِ وَهِيَ وَتْرُ النَّحَرِ وَبَعْدَهَا رَقَعَتَيْنَ So this hadith is uh, regarding, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, that the Qasr namaz is only for the obligation, obligatory prayers, for the Fard namazes. Uh, regarding the sunnah, so there is no qasr in that, you have to read the whole sunnah. So this hadith is by Ibn Umar radiallahu He says that I prayed with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil hadr. Hadr means uh, not traveling in your city. So in, tra- uh, in your city and in safar. So I prayed with him in hadr, the zuhar salah. While in the city I prayed with him zuhar. So he prayed uh, four rakats. And after that, he prayed two rakats. So the four uh, fard rakats of zuhr and the two sunnat rakats. And then I prayed with him in the safar, in the traveling. So he prayed two rakats for fard and two rakats for sunnat. And then I prayed asr with him. So in asr, he prayed. Uh, what do he prayed uh, four rakatain? Well. Uh, Basically, he prayed four rakats in Hadar and two rakats in Safar. But after that, he did not pray. Because after Asr, you're not really supposed to pray any sunnahs or nawafil. The only sunnah in Asr is before the, before the actual fard of Asr. 
ولم يصلي بعد هشين والمغرب في الحضر والمغرب في الحضر والصفر سواء ثلاث ركعات لا تنقص في الحضر ولا في الصفر. so the maghrib namaz even in the hadar while you are in the city and when you are in traveling so it is the same it is three rakats there is nothing that you would shorten or nor you would add anything wa hiya witr nahar wa ba'daha rakatain and that is the witr of the day the witr of the night is after isha prayer and the witr of the day is the maghrib prayer وَبَعْدَهَا رَكَتَيْنِ And the sunnah of Maghrib is two rakats. Hadith number four. An ibn Abbas anna al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kharaja min al-Madinati ila Makkata la yakhafu ila Allah rabbil alameen fasalla rakatayn. Qala Buzha hadha hadithun hasanun. Sahihun. So it is mentioned by ibn Abbas that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he exited from Madina towards Makkah. And this is suffer when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exited from Madinah to Makkah Without fearing any enemy Without fearing that the enemy would attack Except he feared Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And in traveling he prayed to rakat This hadith is actually clarifying Because uh, the ayah that I read in the beginning وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْعَوْدِ فَلَيْسَ عَلِكُمْ جَنَانَ أَن تَقْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ this, when this ayat continues, it actually talks about when someone actually goes in uh, war. So in war, you shorten your prayer in such a way, it's called Salatul Khawf. Um, so a lot of the companions at that time, actually, um, they thought about that maybe the shortening of prayer is only in Salatul Khawf. When you have fear that the enemies would attack. But this hadith actually clarifies that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this blessing. That even when we are not in the state of fear, when we are enjoying our journey, even at that time, uh, we can uh, shorten our prayers. Hadith number five: An Ibn Umar, anhu ustughifa ala baad ahli fajda bi sairu fa akhar al maghrib hatta ghab al shafaku, thum nazal fa jama bainoma thum maqbarhum anna Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يفعل ذلك إذا جد به السير. It is mentioned by Ibn Umar radiallahu anh, that he was called he was called from his uh, wives from some of his wives so he hurried up his uh, traveling so he delayed maghrib until the twilight came then he descended from his animal and then he collected between maghrib and isha and then he informed his companions that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do like that whenever he used to want to hurry some uh, his traveling. Now this is one of the hadiths that the Hanafi take uh, that you cannot do jama bayna salatain. According to uh, the Shafi'i school of thought and the other uh, family and Maliki school of thought that you can actually do uh, the jama bayna salatain. Jama bayna salatain basically means that you can collect two prayers. You can collect Zohar and Asr and read them at either Zohar time or Asr time, Maghrib and Isha prayer at Maghrib time or Isha prayer at Isha time. But uh, Imam Abu Hanifa says that Jama Bayn Salatin is not allowed. The only type of Jama Bayn Salatin which is not exactly Jama Bayn Salatin, uh, but it's just you're praying two rakats at such time it feels that you're praying together, is that you delay Zohar at such an end, you're delaying it to the end. Then you're praying it and you're praying Asr early, as soon as the time starts. So it's like you're praying two, raka, two, uh, two namazes together. Or you're uh, delaying Maghrib at such a time that at the end of Maghrib and Isha at the beginning that it feels that you're collecting the two namazes. And there's actually other hadiths that go to the actual Dalil, why Imam Abu Hanifa says that you cannot do Jama Bayna Salatin. But this hadith, um, it's actually talking about when Hazrat Ibn Umar عن, he traveled um, from uh, he was going back to Medina and he delayed the Maghrib namaz and he did it says uh, he did jama between them but what you can understand is Hazrat Ibn Umar عن, he wanted to hurry he wanted to reach Medina fast so he did not leave Maghrib and just uh, try to get home at Isha time and then read Isha 
once he got to, uh, and Maghrib and Isha once he got to uh, Medina rather he delayed Maghrib to almost the end time and once Isha time was about to come then at that time he got off his camel he read Maghrib he stayed for a while he read Isha and then he continued his journey so this is one of the dalil that if Jama Baina Salatain uh, was to be allowed then uh, Hazrat um, Ibn Umar an, he would have just left Maghrib at that time and would have reached home and then would have read Maghrib and Isha Hadith number 6 عن البراء ابن عازب قال سحبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثمانية عشر سفرا فما رأيته ترك الركعتين إذا زاغت الشمس قبل, قبل الزهر وفي الباب يعني ابن عمد this is the last hadith إن شاء الله I'll give you guys a break till tomorrow after that uh, براء ابن عازب says that I accompanied رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم for 18 years or 18 uh, travels or journeys so he said that not one time did I see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leave the two rak'ats when the uh, sun comes a little down at that time two rak'ats are to be prayed so he says that not one time in safar that I saw the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, leave these two rak'ats so this hadith uh, what it tells us is a lot of people they think that uh, when they are traveling they just read the fard namaz and they leave the sunnah and nawafil but what the sun what the actual sunnah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to be that even though you are shortening the first prayer but even after that you should still read the sunnah and nawafil prayers you should not leave them because nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam 18 travel uh, 18 journeys not once did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam leave those two prayers, and that was basically the time where, uh, during the daytime, where Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to travel, and right after sunset they used to set their camp and they used to stop uh, completing their journey. Uh, they used to t like you know uh, stop for a while, and then the day daytime they used to travel again. But even when you, they were in a hurry and they wanted to get to. Uh, so, uh, their destination even at that time they are still reading the nafil prayers so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of uh, reading sunnah uh, all the time even during our traveling our travels and uh, during our journeys and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of learning more knowledge inshallah tomorrow we'll start a different chapter uh, each different chapters for each day uh, we have seven more days, six, seven more days. So, inshallah, seven more chapters. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khalq halku Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika amma rahmeen. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana la tahmil alayna san kama hamiltu alayhi al-ladhina min qablina rabbana wa la tuhammil lama la taqda lana bih. واعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانسونا على القوم الكافرين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم يا الله يرحمنا يا من اني مستيكس ور دان يا الله بليز فورغيف ذيم يا الله بليز اكسبت ايفري وانز اتندنس اوفر هير وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلق محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا رحيم سو ان شاء الله ويل هاف ا سمول بريك رايت ناو ان شاء الله اراوند 755 وي وود هاف ذا افطار سبيتش